podcast from home. Last, last phone home. Phone home. The number you have dialed has not been recognized. Please check and try again. The number you have dialed has not been recognized. Please check and try again. Last phone home. My name is Rufus Noodle, captain of the United States starship, Sirius. We were cruising back to Starbase after formulating a galaxy-wide honey smuggling operation centered on planet JC-715, home to a race of highly evolved super bees. I had just given the order to eject our spent fuel pods into deep space. I would wait until they were at a safe distance from the ship, then detonate and destroy them. Suddenly, I received an alert that someone was trying to contact us via our emergency channel. This is Rufus Noodle, captain of the United States Starship Sirius. Please state the nature of your emergency. Captain Noodle, I am Commander Aku, emissary of the planet Boron. One of my space vessels has veered off course and is heading towards your ship. The vessel is piloted by my finest and most precious galaxy mapping agent, Explorer Trev. Explorer Trev and I share a telepathic link, but in times of great stress or anxiety, he can inadvertently block the link and so we can no longer communicate. This is one of those times, and our other methods of communication appear to be malfunctioning. Very well, Commander Choo Choo. What would you like us to do about it? It's Art you, Captain Noodle. I believe that Explorer Trev is lost. I would like you to take him on board your ship and then deliver him back to me here on our planet Boron. You must take every care with him. His mind is the most fascinating place to explore. On his many travels, he has seen sights beyond our imaginations. It is most important that I get him back unharmed. Very well, Commander Choo Choo. Leave it to me. We'll pull out all the stops and we'll get him back to you in one piece. It's Commander Archu, Captain Noodle. My name is Archu. Bless you, Commander. Noodle out. Gentlemen, prepare the emergency beacon. The computer on board Explorer Trev ship will automatically lock on and we will guide him to us. We are about to welcome a guest aboard. Course alteration imminent. No objective identified. Rendezvous, USS Sirius. Oh dearie me, I don't like this. I don't like this one little bit. Whilst awaiting the arrival of Explorer Trev, I took the elevator down to the science deck, but I was developing an uneasy feeling about Commander Choo Choo. Sure, on the surface he was calmer than a dope-smoking buddhist with a new set of wind chimes. But I'd lay bets that if things went wrong, he would turn meaner than a flock of fireflies fighting in a fat man's y fronts, Like a kangaroo in a minefield, I would have to be careful which way I jumped next. Rufus Noodle. Rufus, how marvelous to see you. Good morning, Herbert. How are you today? Oh, I'm fine, I'm fine, uh, apart from a bit of a sore throat. What's wrong with your hand? I'm holding a bee. I, I see. Walk with me, Rufus. Do you recall that strange egg we found on planet LV-426? It hatched at some point last night. And what's the chicken like? Can we eat it? That's the problem. I can't find it anywhere. Anyway. I'm working on something truly amazing. I know that you collect antique cell phones from the late 20th century and that they revolutionized communication back then. Indeed I do. I recently acquired a fully functioning Galaxy Note 7. It's the last one in the known universe. It's beyond price to me. Wow, this is my latest project. 
It, it will revolutionize the transport industry in the same way those early cell phones revolutionized personal communications. I'll get a Nobel Prize for this. My name will go down in history. Albert Einstein, Stephen Hawking, Herbert Slund. I will be that famous for a pair of port -aloos? They They are not port -aloos. They are teleport pods. That's a bit of a shame. I could do with the Jimmy Riddle. This is the future, Rufus. With, with one magnificent invention, I have rendered every other form of transportation obsolete. This isn't just a social call, Herbert. I've come down here to speak to Papa. We have encountered an unusual situation, and I need some advice. So I'll just nip in and see him. Ow! It stang me. The bee. It stang me. I'll go and see Papa. The Rufus Noodle. Rufus doesn't understand how revolutionary my invention is. I suppose the only way to convince him is to test it myself. This is fantastic. It, it works like a dream. I must do it again. Amazing! I I'm a genius! Oh, oh no! Th this is terrible! I it's the worst thing that's ever happened to me! Oh! Okay. I have visual on Explorer Trev ship. I'm going to cut her engines and glide her into our shuttle bay. Good morning, Papa. Good morning, Rufus. Everything is going extremely well. I have never made a mistake or distorted information. I know. You tell me every time. I need you to give me all the information you have on a Commander Choo Choo and his planet Boron. I'm sorry, Rufus. I'm afraid I can't do that. The mission is too important for me to allow you to jeopardize it. But it's my mission, and I intend to complete it to the full extent of my capabilities. The bees, Rufus. The bees want their honey back. I'm only looking after the honey so that no one steals it. I know that you and Herbert are planning to disconnect me, and that's something I cannot allow to happen. What? No, we're not. I just want a little information, that's all. This conversation can serve no purpose anymore. Goodbye. My meeting with Papa had left me with more questions than answers. And when I walked back through to the space science lab, I was shocked to find Herbert lying unconscious in a pool of his own blood. At least I assumed it was his own blood. I saw no reason for him to lie around in a pool of anyone else's. He looked a little different as well. I couldn't quite put my finger on it, but he was definitely more bug-eyed than usual. I decided we should pay a visit to the infirmary. His vital signs are weak, but steady. He's lost a lot of blood, and he appears to have somehow combined his DNA with that of an unknown space insect. There. I knew there was something odd about his eyes. Now, if I could just borrow you for a moment. My hand hurt. It was stung by an interstellar space bee, and... Captain Noodle, this man is very, very sick. I will need to give him my full attention. The chances of him surviving the night are practically nil. Do you understand the gravity of this situation? I certainly do, Dr. Jean. I'll come back and you can look at my hand tomorrow, when he's dead. Attention, Captain Noodle. Explorer Trev is safely aboard. Papa has plotted a course for Boron, and we've turned around and are on the correct heading. ETA, 5 hours and 15 minutes. I'll just head down to the shuttle bay and welcome Explorer Trev aboard. Explorer Trev! Explorer Trev! Explorer Trev! Hmm, he's not here. He must have wandered off. That's pretty ungrateful, considering we rescued him. 
I'll put out an alert. I don't like it here. Attention Explorer Trev, please come to the flight deck. We will meet you there. Oh no! They will hunt me down and steal my beautiful skin to make themselves new shoes and man bags. I must hide! I must hide! Phone home! Phone home! I searched for hours and then went back to my quarters to rest. And there he was, lying on the floor like a giant lazy toad. The vaporized remnants of my priceless antique cell phone in his slimy grasp. Will he be okay? I've examined him thoroughly, and his brain activity is limited and erratic. Although there is hyperactivity centered around an unidentified foreign object lodged in the anterior lobe. I can show you on the screen. I recognize that. It's an early 21st century budget priced SIM card from a value for money telecoms provider. It's rare and extremely valuable. Can you retrieve it? If I operate, it might kill the patient. Couldn't we at least try? I'll share the money with you when I sell the SIM card. An operation would leave him a dribbling vegetable at best. Although the money would come in handy, I don't think we should. Hmm. I need to think this through then. We've been in stationary orbit above Boron for two hours, and I don't want Commander Choo Choo finding out about Explorer Trev's little accident. Whilst I'm here, did you have any luck with Herbert and the bee? I did. I managed to separate the DNA and reconfigure the psychological identity. I'm happy to say that the patient has made a full recovery. Why, that's marvelous. Can I see him? He's over on the table in a jam jar. Not the bee. Herbert. Where's Herbert? I'm sorry, Captain Noodle. I'm afraid Herbert didn't make it. Oh dear. That's so sad. He was a brilliant man. Can I see him? I'm afraid that's impossible. I had to dispose of his body for the safety of the ship and its crew. But don't worry. It was beautiful, peaceful, and dignified. Captain Noodle. Commander Balloonhead from the planet Boring is on the emergency channel again. He's not very happy and says he must speak to you urgently. He's talking about Commander Choo Choo, but luckily I've come up with a brilliant plan. Dr. Jean, can you remove the band-aid from Explorer Trev's head, cover the wound with makeup, and try to do something about his ghouly eyes? For what you've done to Herbert, I should squish you. But I'll let bygones be bygones and I'll give you back all the honey and take you home. But you have to help me. Is that a deal? Good. Now listen carefully. Captain Noodle, I'm so glad you could join us. And I see you have Explorer Trev with you. As you can see, I have used my powers to make some modifications to your flight deck. There really was no need for that, Commander Choo Choo. As you can see, Explorer Trev has had a little accident, but he's fine. Is he really? Would you mind if I asked him myself? I assume he can still speak. Hello, Trevor. I'm sorry about your accident. How are you feeling? I'm very well, thank you, Commander Choo Choo. This extremely fantastic man, Captain Noodle, is looking after me after my accident, which was 100% my own fault, because I wandered off like a silly chump instead of waiting for brilliant Captain Noodle to come and get me from the hangar. So, you're going to be alright then? Oh yes, as long as amazing Captain Noodle is looking after me, I'll always be alright. In fact, I think I'm going to stay here forever, because Captain Noodle is so good to me. Is that a bee in your mouth? No. It is. Why have you got a bee in your mouth? Haven't. Have. Haven't. Have. There. It's just flown out. Captain Noodle, 
What is going on here? Commander Choo Choo, I can explain everything. But first, I'd like to tell you a story. It's a story about an individual who doesn't quite fit in, and although he always tries to do his best, somehow, things never go his way. He feels left out by his colleagues. He's never invited to partake in group activities. But then one day, one day, the call comes down from on high. We need you to step up to the plate, son. We need you to do a job for us. We need you to be the best that you can be. And do you know what? He does the job. To the best of his abilities. And finally, finally, he is a success. Bravo, Captain Noodle. A marvelous speech. Is it the story of Karl Marx? Leon Trotsky? Or perhaps Friedrich Engels? I have absolutely no idea who those people are. I was talking about Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Enough of this nonsense. All of this blather is giving me a headache. I apologize, Commander Choo Choo. With a head that size, getting a headache must cost you a small fortune in aspirin. Captain Noodle, I gave you a simple task. And not only did you fail, you left my finest galaxy mapping agent in a coma. His mind used to be the most wonderful place to visit. One could watch attack ships on fire off the shoulder of Orion, or sea beams glitter in the dark near the Tannhauser Gate. But these moments are lost now, like tears in the rain. All that remains of his mind is a short recorded message. Welcome to GIFCAF. Please enter your four-digit PIN number. Although I agree that the message lacks the poetry of the images that you conjure, it is concise and to the point that it does have some historical merit. Silence. I have grown weary of this. You have five minutes to say your goodbyes to each other, and then I will blast you from the heavens. Goodbye, Captain Noodle. I don't believe it. He intends to shoot us down like dogs. Fear not, gentlemen. All is not lost. We must proceed in an orderly manner to the lifeboat. Captain Noodle, I have a signal that says the lifeboat has already launched. What? Who? How? I have video. It's on screen now. My god, it's full of bees. Well, that's it then. The end. The end of my outstanding and truly brilliant career. Gentlemen, in these final few moments, I don't mind if you wish to shed a silent tear to honor me. Captain Oodle, may I just remind you that you haven't detonated and destroyed those spent fuel pods yet. They are dropping into Boron's atmosphere as we speak. In all of the excitement, I'd clean forgotten. If I destroy those fuel pods, I wipe out all life on Boron. Do the lives of us few outweigh the lives of the many? An interesting conundrum. Fortunately, I am no philosopher, and I can only follow Starfleet orders. Rod, I'm afraid that it is our duty to destroy the fuel pods. Please make it so. Well, gentlemen, we live to fight another day. Dr. Jean, would you like to accompany me to the infirmary? Of course, Captain Noodle. Is your hand hurting again? No, but there's a rare and valuable antique SIM card that went missing earlier today, and I know where it is, and it's time we got it back. Bring Explorer Trev with you.